Hey everybody, I'm David and welcome to Oc Talk, the series where we talk about ocarinas and other music stuff. Today we're going to discuss some of my favorite practice tips as well as address some of your biggest questions such as why is practice important? How long should I practice for? How do I even practice? But first I'd like to address three myths that tend to scare people away from practicing, myself included, when I was much younger. Myth number one, practice is boring. I used to hate practicing when I was growing up, especially when I was taking piano lessons from 13 to 15. And the thing that really, really drove me up the wall was practicing my scales, which my teacher had me do over and over and over again. And uh, it was super boring. I really just wanted to make music. But what I learned later on was that having an understanding of the things that we're doing in our practice sessions, as well as having goals such as learning a new song or improving your speed or technique, those things help to make things a lot more interesting and uh, really help develop your focus. Long story short, practice doesn't have to be boring. Myth number two, I don't have time to practice. Let me paint a quick picture for you. Let's say that you're just starting out and you have a goal of practicing three hours a week. What would be a better situation? Practicing three days a week, one hour each of those days, or practicing 30 minutes a day, six days a week, and then you get to take a day off. I'll let you think about that for a second. Well, if you do the three day routine, an hour is a long time, especially if you're just getting started with practicing. So you're gonna get tired, probably lose focus and start to get bored, and you're not gonna be able to retain all the stuff that you're practicing during that session. But if you do the 30 minute sessions, it's a much shorter amount of time, and so not only will you be able to focus better, but you'll also be able to retain more information. And if 30 minutes is too much, you can even do 15 minutes a day, and it'll probably be more effective and focused than doing a full hour. Myth number three, I'm not going to perform, so I don't need to practice. While it's true that practicing does help with performing, what practicing really does is it helps you develop those skills you need to play your instrument well. It gives you a platform to work on your technique, uh, increasing your speed and your memorization, which are all really important things for any musician. Now that we got those myths out of the way, let's go ahead and discuss my top seven practice tips. Tip number one, begin with a positive attitude. If you think about it, nothing ever goes well when you approach it with a negative attitude. When you don't feel like doing something, you're automatically putting up this wall that's gonna prevent you from learning, from giving your full energy and developing certain skills. Like if you're going to uh, do a chore or take a test, these things automatically put you in defense mode and you're not open to learning from those new experiences. You're definitely setting yourself up for failure. So when it comes to practicing, you can either approach it from what I did when I was a little kid and say, "Ugh, I just hate repeating these skills over and over again, or you could think about the awesome things you're about to accomplish during your practice time. Some things that I really like to do to help get myself pumped up for a practice is I like to watch some of my favorite artists on YouTube and just see the amount of skill that they've developed and that they've dedicated themselves to uh, achieving at that level. I also listen to some of my favorite music, my favorite songs that I'd love to play one day, and just knowing that it's possible. Like going back on my old YouTube videos, I can see that I used to be nowhere near as skilled as I am today. And that's because I put in hours and hours and hours of work into developing my skill. We'll come back to that a little bit later about seeing how much you progress because that's a big motivator as well. Tip number two, schedule a time to practice daily. Consistency is so important whenever it comes to developing a habit, which is what this is. You wanna get into the habit of practicing. You wanna get into the mindset. You wanna get your body ready because it's very much a physical activity. So by practicing at the same time every day, it's really gonna help prepare your mind and your body to make the most out of those sessions. It's also good to consider where your energy levels are throughout the day because you don't wanna assign a practice time um, when you get home right after school and you're probably tired and a little bit groggy. For me, I feel like my energy is best used in the morning or in the evening before I go to sleep when I don't have a lot on my plate at either of those times and I can just focus on developing those skills that I wanna do for that practice session. Tip number three, have a plan and set some goals. What's really gonna help you make the most out of your practicing is if you have a plan. And that's gonna be determined by how much time you're spending in your practice sessions, and then also what your goals are. Are you just trying to learn a certain song or several songs? Do you have a concert coming up? Do you want to develop certain skills or your speed? Having a list of things that you'd love to do in the future is always helpful for this. But what I was taught to do during my university days was to pick a song or two songs that I can learn over three to four weeks. If it takes you less than three to four weeks, then it's probably too easy, but if it takes you longer, it might be too hard. So think about where your skill levels are right now. What is the most difficult song that you can play well? And then just pick another song that's gonna help you improve just a little bit more than that. And then after that month, that period of three to four weeks, then you pick another song a little bit harder than that. And slowly but surely, you're gonna be way better several months down the line than you are right now. If you're not exactly sure what songs are gonna be best for you or you don't have anything in mind right now, method books are always really good. These are in books that are instructional and teach you 
step-by-step uh, -step how to read sheet music, how to improve your ocarina playing. These books already include tons of songs and exercises to help develop your skills in your playing in general. And I'm also working on one right now called How to Play Ocarina. If that's available, it will be in the description below. Finally, if you don't know exactly where your skill levels are, you can always ask a music friend or a teacher to make some recommendations for you because it's always good to have an outside perspective of your skills, which we'll talk about at the end of this video. Tip number four, slow down and get it right. One of the things my piano teacher taught me when I was younger was that it's more important to slow down and get a passage of music correct than it is to play it at the correct speed right off the top. Because if you don't teach yourself how that passage of music goes with your fingers, if you don't get that muscle memory down, you're never gonna be able to play it at full speed. So you can always try to just play at a much slower pace until you feel comfortable with that passage. And then you just go a little bit faster, a little bit faster, a little bit faster until you get to the right tempo. A metronome, which is a device that does that clicking sound, the one that goes Those are super helpful, though I don't recommend you getting one of those at the very beginning because it, having that strict timing can be a little discouraging at first if you don't have really good rhythm. So first, just play at your own comfort level. Slow it down, practice until you get it right, and then try to play it at the correct tempo. And just in general, what I like to do whenever I get a new piece of music is I will scan the whole piece and then I'll try to pick out the most difficult passages. And then I'll just work on that difficult passage until I feel that's really good. And then I'll look for the next difficult passage, do the same thing. It doesn't all have to be in order. You just have to practice the difficult parts first until you feel really good about those. And then you can go back and do the piece as a whole. Tip number five, keep a practice journal. So going back to having a positive attitude, having some sort of a recording or a journal of how much you've progressed is so encouraging. Even if you're just recording little notes about your practice sessions, I worked on this today for 15 minutes, made me feel really awesome. Or I learned how to do this today, I practiced this song, I did this, I did this, I did this. Pretty soon you're gonna see a whole list of things that you have accomplished throughout your practice sessions. And it's just really gonna help you show how much you can accomplish if you just put in the time and the dedication to it. Tip number six, choose a distraction-free location. There's a reason why in colleges and some high schools why they have practice rooms. They're dedicated rooms to doing nothing but practicing. There's no distractions in those rooms and there's just so much freedom in knowing that you can make all the ugly noise you want and not bother anybody. So try to pick a spot in your home or at school where you can practice without any distractions. It really just helps to have a very focused practice session, which is important whenever you're developing those kinds of skills. And last but not least, tip number seven, find someone to help you get started. Going back to what I said earlier, having a teacher or a friend, someone who is musically inclined to help you get started and help you assess your music skills is so important. Music education is, I think, very much underappreciated because anybody can pick up an instrument, it's true. I was self-taught starting out, but having somebody who can help you assess your skills and put you on the right path is so important. A good teacher will help you stay encouraged, focused and motivated. And these were things that I really needed growing up with uh, developing my music skills because I hated practicing and I really needed someone there who was going to continue to encourage me and correct me whenever I was doing things wrong. It's good to have somebody check out what you're practicing and help you move on the right path because you've probably heard the saying, practice makes perfect, which is not true. Perfect practice makes perfect and you have no idea if you're practicing correctly or not without having somebody on the outside say, you could be doing this better, or great job, you're doing this super well. I know there's a shortage on Ocarina instructors out there, and honestly, this is a one-way relationship. This is great for relaying information to you, but I can't see where you're at in your skill level. So if you know anyone who's musical, whether they be a teacher or uh, another musician or artist, seek them out and ask them for help because that's gonna be the most important part in your musical development is to know that you're on the right track. That's gonna do it for today's episode and I'd love to hear from you guys. What are some things that you do to improve your practice sessions? Leave a comment down below to let me know. A very special thank you to my patrons who help make these videos possible and if you'd like to know how you can help support these tutorials as well, you can click over here or the little eye up here in the corner. Thank you so much for watching and I'm posting three videos a week with a new schedule. I'm posting tutorials on Tuesdays, vlogs on Thursdays, and music videos every Saturday. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of those and I'll see you guys next time.